Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Seeing that we've got the wings at the proper incidence, let's get the vertical connectors for the ailerons made. All right, let me show you what we're doing today. Um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make the rods. All right, the way I'm, I'm making the push rods um, is I've got some eighth inch, it's gonna be kind of hard to see. Let me let me get the bigger pieces just so you got something bigger, something bigger to look at. Um, it's uh, it's five thirty seconds round brass, and the the hole on the inside is eighth inch. So what we're doing is this is going to slide over the top. So I've got little three eighths pieces cut out, and this is gonna slide over the top. Now once it's slid over the top. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is it's going to get glued into place. So this will get glued on first. Then I'm going to come through, and although I've already done it and I haven't glued this one on, um, I did it with the band already on there. I come in with a, a number 40, uh, 46 drill bit, a wire size drill bit. And what that does is that opens up the hole just enough so that I could take my 256 rod and screw it down inside with just a little bit of side friction on it. And then I'll be able to come on in and wick thin CA down inside. It'll go down amongst the threads inside and it'll also be underneath this band clamp on the outside. So this is what it's gonna, this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. Let's see if I can get it so you can focus on it a little bit better. So that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. And my GoPro is just going insane right now. GoPro, turn off. Sorry about that. Mr. GoPro is keying in on words that I'm saying and it's just taking pictures and a lot of them. All right, anyway, in a high strength area. So uh, it's not like you're operating the elevator or the rudder with this thing. This is, it's just transferring to the upper aileron. And I've done this in the past and I've never had one of these things fail. I'm not saying it can't, but I've just never had one fail. So let me go ahead, I'll get these things glued up and this is gonna be split into two pieces. Um, I'm going short on one end and then a longer on the top. So this will be the base. Um, because I need, I need good adjustability, but I decided that what I wanna do is with the little short throw, um, this is just gonna be the bottom of it. And then all the adjustment will be made up at the top. Uh, but before I get the rods to length, I'm gonna uh, show you what I'm gonna do to the ailerons. All right, what I decided to do is I decided to use some 132nd inch uh, plywood. And the reason why I'm gonna put it on here is we're working if I'm gonna, if this is gonna be transferring load from the bottom wing to the top wing, I want something with some strength in it, and this is just balsa. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna run this with the grain in an opposite direction of the balsa. So these are going to sit into place just like this, and then these are just going to get, sorry about this, see how messy it gets. These will be screwed down and through this because even on the top wing, I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, so this would be just like the part that's underneath the bottom on the lower wing, uh, because the horn, control horn, is gonna to fit to the bottom of this. So they'll both be sandwiched top and bottom. And that's just to add more strength, because down here is where all the work's getting done, and uh, I want this strong, but then I also want this strong too. So that's how I'm doing it. So I'll be taking these things off, uh, gluing these into place, and then I'll probably, I'll probably use some, do, do, do the old uh, masking tape. Uh, put a piece on the bottom of this, a piece here, glue it down, drill through it, and then I can pull it all apart and not, uh, you know, get anything stuck to those. So anyway, that's pretty much what I'm gonna try to get done today, and we'll see how well that's all gonna go. And all right, it's been an interesting day today. We got the good and the bad, the good, Got the ailerons on one side done. The bad, uh, I only had two clevis pins, so I've got to, uh, I got to order some more. So maybe tomorrow, uh, when I'm up at work, I can swing over by Dubro, see if they're open, if I can stop in and pick up. 
Um, if not, I'll see what I can possibly do with uh, Motion RC, because if I can't pick it up over there, I can have them send it to me. It'll cost me five bucks, but I'll, I'll see what I can do with them. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it worked out. We're going to do a little testing. I want to show you, because there, there was a question... Uh, how when I was originally going to set it up this way is that it was really going to change the amount of throw you get out of the top aileron versus the lower aileron. And I was going to make a jig so we can go ahead and, and just I decided I don't want to do that. This is how I'm going to put it together. So um, yeah, let me give you a quick little walkthrough just to show you uh, how I did it. All right, let's just go ahead and focus on the right-hand side of the airplane because the right-hand side does this and the left-hand side doesn't because there's no rod in between the two. And uh, yeah, if that looks just from your standpoint that this is way off, it's just because of how you're looking at it right now. I've got this propped up just so I can show you the measurements. All right, I had those all cut out prior to you and I showed you earlier this morning. I uh, went ahead, uh, glued those in place. And the way I did that was come by and strike a line down here because I want this on the same angle as what's going through. Because if you look, boom, it's right in line with the interplane struts. That's quality. That's quality workmanship. It's American made. So, <laughs> so uh, I went ahead and put these things on. I had to cut these things down uh, just to make them shorter because with the one that I said I was going to put up on top, let's see if you can see it. Yeah, let's put, there we go. You might be able to see it now. Um, it runs through about a quarter inch versus this side where it just comes through maybe an eighth. I just wanted to have the adjustability. There will be a 256 nut on here to tighten up against the bottom um, just so everything stays tight. All right, so anyway, so let's go ahead and lower it down. So here's pretty much the full sweep. It's, I mean, I can go a little bit farther down than that. I'm just hitting the table. Um, but that's going to be way more than you're ever going to see on this plane because with as much aileron as there is, I'll be able to get it to do nice rolls at about half. So it's probably going to stay maybe maxed out at half and then just a little bit down for takeoff and landings just for correction. Um, so, but we'll see how that, how that flies when we get it up in the air. Now, the question was, let me get this set up. Hold, please. Okay. We wanted to have it set up just so we can get a measurement because they thought that this top was going to be a lot higher up because of this angle that when you lifted that when you lifted the bottom and it pushed up on the top that it was going to raise this one higher than this one. So let's see how well we can get in. Let me readjust you so I can get you real close to take a look. We're going to come on in and I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this with the light. All right, let me show you the measurements. So we're going to go from the top of the wing, the trailing edge of the wing, to the top of the aileron. It's three quarters of an inch down here on the bottom wing. Now we're going to cut to the top wing, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be touching, and then touching. So right there, see I'm coming in, I'm not compressing it down. It's the same three quarters of an inch. Alright, so that's just a little uh, indication that yes, you can get away in doing that and it's not going to really affect it. Now, if I raise it higher up, it might affect it a little bit more. I'm not sure. That's just going to be uh, your basic low rate uh, aileron levels. That's where I'll have them set up. So just for uh, takeoff and landing, um, that's pretty much how they'll be. It's just a little for a little bit of correction. So just in case you get kind of stupid when you get close to the ground and, and you, you need to have the old brain lock. Um, you're not going to throw that thing into a snap at you know 10 feet off the ground because these things will do it. That's the biplanes to me are the hardest planes to fly. Um, you know, start off on a trainer. Once you get done with a trainer and you get proficient with it, get a Piper Cub, any kind of tail dragger. That will tell you what the rudder really does, not only on the ground but in the air. Uh, after that, if you want, try uh, aerobatic planes. Aerobatic planes are very nice, very stable flying airplanes that you can do a whole heck of a lot with. Um, after that, if you want to go warbirds, go World War II, um, you're going back to tail dragger again. So what you learn in the Piper Cub teaches you everything on proper takeoff and landings with a, with a warbird. Uh, and then after that, if you really want to find out what 
planes can do, what the rudder can really do to an airplane, get a biplane. <laughs> it's, they, they look great in the air, um, but the rudder does more for steering a biplane. Um, and if you go a little bit too far, uh, which you can get that rudder to make that airplane do. So, so anyway, this one uh, is right now, the way we're looking with me possibly waiting for parts and with uh, most likely getting a whole lot of time off of work. Um, so let's just go ahead. We'll call this a quick little video and then uh, I'll get everything cleared up. And then uh, next time you see me back down in the shop, we'll be working on a tail.